Hello and welcome my inside out bumblebees. How you doing in this wonderful day? So uh, with the new update, usually you got a bunch of really, really awesome stuff. But every once in a while you get something that you're just like, w w what is going on? And that's what I wanted to show you guys today. So the cannon, as wonderful as he is, has a bit of a mishap going on with his uh, skinnage over here. <laughs> Look at this thing! Look at this thing! What the heck is that? And why is it happening? Well, no, sadly, there's not like a new skin bundle or something like that for the cannons. I'm just going to throw that out of there. Uh, that's probably going to happen at some point in the game. I think they will come out with new skins for all the monkeys, hopefully. Um... I'll get, to, I'll get to that more detail later on. But for now, why is this happening and what is even going on? Well, if you look very, very closely, I'm fairly certain this is the Pat Fusty Cannon right here. Yeah, that that's that's no joke right there, my friends. This is the Pat... The, the, I, the Pat Fusty Cannon... This is literally Pat Fusty's skin on the cannon, and then the wheels, I have no idea what the heck's going on here. But it's a glitch or an error in the game that causes your cannons to be Pat Fustyified. Uh, I, it probably has something to do with the fact that Pat Fusty just got a new skin. So yeah, I mean, we got a new skin going on. Somehow, It's weird, though, that it, it's not all of the cannons. It's not like, uh, you know, every single cannon sort of screwed up and messed up and everything. It's literally only the Zero One cannon. Uh, just the faster reload cannon is, is the Pat Busty cannon. You can see, like, his, it's his belly over here, I think, or his, is that his eye? Don't tell me that's his eye. That's, like, his eyebrow or something. I don't know. No, no, that's a fin. Excuse me. It's a fin on the cannon. <sighs> Got me for a second, man. I was like, oh, my God. At first, I was going to say this is his belly, and I'm like, wait, no, you can't have that on his belly. He's got a shark fin on his belly now. So, anyways, I guess it's about that time, guys. We are playing on... Uh, double health Moab is one of the easier maps in the game, so it's really not that exciting of a game mode, let's be honest here. Uh, we're doing nothing crazy, I just wanted to show you guys off this really cool skin here, and uh, hopefully have some fun doing it as well. So, uh, uh, I'll show you guys some of the other cannons eventually, but for now I do want to farm just like a little bit. And talk a little bit more about Adora, so I've talked a lot about Adora lately. I kind of wanted to bundle it all up together into one cohesive unit if I can. Alright, for you guys. Adora is the best hero in the game. Just straight up. Doesn't matter. One interesting thing about her is that she does not do any buffs to any other towers. She just does her own thing. And her own thing is very, very, very powerful. Um, I think the, the, the main thing about it is that she basically can't miss. Uh, her a attacks are so balloon-seeking that they're automatically going to hit. She does a good amount of damage, a good amount of it, uh, uh, pierce on these guys. So overall, just by herself, she's one of the most powerful heroes in the game. Uh, one interesting thing about her, though, is that she does not reach level 20 by the time you get to round 100, unless you use one of her abilities. So we're going to talk about all three abilities here uh, really quickly. Um, first of all, there's... Here, let me get a farm going in here. Oh, I need some cam detection too. See, I oh, can't afford a ninja. Crap. All right. Well, she's got three abilities. The first ability, which we have right now, basically increases your attack, uh, damage, and range. So watch the range on her. Whoop! Huge, 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 huge range. We're not talking about some nonsensical little baby range bonus over here. We're talking about a big chunky range increase. Helps us out a lot. If you guys haven't been able to tell. Um, and then uh, her second ability, once she reaches level seven. Uh, is to sacrifice other towers to get experience for herself. Basically, I think she gets four times the experience. I think. Go quote me on that. I think she gets four times the experience based on the cost of the tower. So instead of spending, you know, $1,286, we could buy a $300 tower, sacrifice it, she'd go up a level, right? $325 or whatever. So it means a lot to you. Uh, if you just spend about uh, $20,000, you'd reach level 20 by round 100 or so. So she ends up being very, very powerful once she reaches level 20. So doing a little baby bit of sacrifice really helps you out. She can see through walls. She can pop lead balloons. The only thing she weak, she's weak against is camo and purple, which can be easily fixed by either uh, a 0-2 village and a low-level ninja or something else that can do that popping power for you. Uh, or just getting up to a third-tier village if you want to. 
But uh, she's got no weaknesses. She's freaking amazing, and I absolutely love her. That is the basic uh, idea of her, I guess. Um, one thing you can do is, is very quickly, if you get a little bit of money going up in here, sacrifice just a couple. You know, you don't need to go with sacrificing like crazy. Just sacrifice a couple units. Get her up just a few levels extra, and then that'll allow you to sort of build up a really strong unit. Uh, maybe a fourth or fifth tier tower already pretty soon in the game. And then actually make things like happen. So, uh, what I'm going to do here is we've got double HP Moabs coming in here in just a second. So we've got to make sure we got some Moab popping power. What is the best Moab popping power tower in the game? For me, personally, I really like the Monkey Ace. Um, for early game like this, it is delicious. I'm also going to get rid of my Dark Monkey, believe it or not. Because we're going to do something fun funky here. We're going to go for a quick 1, 2, and as soon as we get the money for it, third tier fighter plane. And then, uh, uh... I don't think sharper darts is going to be important here, so we're just going to go for the spy plane over here as well. Screw it, dude. Um, we're going to go for a fourth tier ninja, and then we're going to alchemize these guys. And that should be a pretty easy way to pop all these guys. That's all it really takes. And I'm not hardcore farming or anything like that. We're just got to play in the game as we go through this, right? Seems fair to me. Um, but these cannons, yeah, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build a crap ton of cannons after I get my, my alchemist going, basically. It's just going to be a cannon army. Uh, and another thing that's kind of interesting about the cannons is the fact that Striker Jones is actually more powerful these days. So we go, let's slow this down. Let's see if we can get an alchemist going. I don't know if I can afford it in time. If not, I think we're going to be okay without it. The, the, the monkey A should take care of him. No problem here. Yeah. Get a Berserker Brew, but nothing more special. Go for one of these. So a regular Moab does not have reinforced ceramics coming inside, so it's actually easier than alternate balloon rounds. Because the uh, ultimate blue runs is tough because you have those extra strength ceramics on the inside on top of all this junk. So uh, let's go for that stronger stamina, and then we're basically freaking set. Let's just get as many freaking uh, cannons as we want and uh, build an army, I suppose. We can even go from uh, Maulers or something like that if we feel like it. But I'm going to lean towards mostly these faster reload cannons just because I find them fun. All right, that's the main reason. No, not going to lie here. So faster reload. Is, why are they... Really, is this ninja somehow further away than these cannons? That's so goofy. The ninja's the furthest away out of all the towers? What the heck? Oh, no. I guess they just randomly throw now? I'm a little bit confused. So what used to happen was that the alchemist would only throw to the three closest towers to themselves. And now it looks like they are throwing randomly instead. Uh, you know, these cannons are getting powered up. You can tell they're, they're getting alchemized here. And they do seem a little bit further away than these other towers. I wonder if I just put, like, another tower sort of uh, off in the, the, the side here who could be powered up by the alchemist. We're going to see if they ever get powered up at all. There you go. We're getting powered up. So it seems like it's more of a random thing than how close they are. That's interesting. I believe that is new unless it's uh, been eluding me for quite a while here. So I think the best way for us to do this is we're going to go for a uh, sort of goofy strategy here, guys. Watch this. We're going to go for a top path. One, two, three, and four. Primary mentoring, which allows us to build the cannons for the same price. So we're going to go for a cannon army here. What is this? Okay, E for cannon. It's used to be Y. Still hard for me to get used to it. We're going to go for a cannon army here, boys. Um, sadly, you can't fit them as well as you want to. They do have a bug, a, a bug, bug footprint. A big footprint over here. Go for a little bit of cannon action up in here. And then uh, what's cool about it is now you get two free upgrades, right? I just said one free upgrade. I think it's two free upgrades. So we can go for, uh, oh, it's only one. Fifth tier must be two free upgrades. One and two upgrades for free. Alrighty then. Um, let's see, what do we want to do here? Let's get a couple of Moab ballers. So sadly, like I was saying, the cannons, even though they, uh, uh, <laughs> The, this one looks different. All the rest of the upgrades do not look different. So let's go bigger bombs and heavy bombs on this guy. Go frag bombs on that one. We'll mix it up a little bit. Moab Ballers are not really very good, honestly, in this game. They're okay. Don't get me wrong. They're okay. But as you get to bigger BFBs and, and Zoma God and stuff like that, they don't seem to do as much damage as they probably should. Uh, now what I should actually do is I should probably end up popping in here another rando monk monkey village. Like this. Uh, and they get this guy up to, uh, 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 get some other random bottom path cannons over here so we can end up popping through those black layers really, really easily. Some recursive clusters and stuff like that. But uh, let's be honest with each other. If we're just building a bunch of zero-one cannons, 
For free! For free! Look at them all! Look at them all! Oh my god! Chunky! These chunky cannons! I love it. So, uh, in a future video, I will be going over Pat Fusty's new skin as well for you guys. Hopefully, I want to get that up for you guys today. Though, uh, no promises. I've been trying to get to all the new content up for you guys as soon as I possibly can so you guys understand what is encompassed in the new update. I know we're all excited. So, um... Let's see, what else do we want to do? Ooh, let's sacrifice! So this is the second upgrade, or the second ability of Adora here, and it's actually going to allow us to get the third upgrade, which is wonderful. So what you want to do is you want to click uh, uh, this, and you want to sacrifice something. You can sacrifice any tower on the screen, except for yourself, of course. Uh, and you basically get the money, the, the money turns to experience. So at this point, it's really not that big of a deal. A, a, a second tier farm, like, doesn't really do all that much. But you can do it almost infinitely, if you really want to. It does have a cooldown, but, like, it really doesn't have a cooldown. Let's be honest, guys. We're at level 10 now. Now we've got, uh, just about to get our third ability here. Sacrifice another one. We get our third ability for level, uh, I think it was level 11, right? I think it's level 11, not 12. But, uh... Uh, what this allows us to do is just straight up own. Alright, so round 63 is coming up. We're actually really good against that because we've got cannons up the wazizzle. But this is a giant blasting beam of death that can hit everything on the screen, anywhere, doing mega damage. And the greatest thing about it is, you know, you, her biggest weakness is basically Moab pop power. She's not great against the Moabs. She's fantastic against Bloons, any which way around. Fantastic against the Bloons. Okay against Moab plus Bloons does like a little bit of damage against them, but... Nothing special. But this thing specifically attacks the Moabs. So if you've got a, a big, chunky balloon coming out against you, I don't know, a Zone oh My God, or a Bad Balloon, or a Reinforced Oh My God, or even DDTs or something like that, they're really quick, you might not have enough time to attack them. This really, really helps you out. It basically makes, so it, makes it so your weakness is no longer a weakness. You no longer need to worry about random Moab popping power. You've got it covered. And I think the greatest thing about this thing is it doesn't just do a single, uh, it doesn't just attack a single balloon, it does grouped damage as well. So even more fantastic. Even more fan freaking fantastic. Alright, let's sacrifice some other crap in here. Um, level 13 already, you know, I could go up to, uh, more than that, but honestly, I think I'm good with that already. I mean, our defense is already more than good enough. Let's put it that way. I think Adora, if I sold all of my cannons, I think Adora with uh, a quick monkey village underneath her, might be able to kill everything. <laughs> no lies. Alright, I don't know. I don't think I need to do anything here. Um, What the heck is this farm? What was that? Have you guys ever noticed this, but this is actually very wintry. So, oh, ooh, ooh. If you guys were curious, alright? I mean, I am... I used to work at a garden center. All right, for a long time, uh, almost 10 years. So I know a little bit about plants. Uh, I can tell you right now that that is 100% a poinsettia. All right, poinsettia. Poinsettia is how you spell it, but uh, that's how I used to say it when I when I <laughs> write it down, poinsettia. Um, but a poinsettia is very, very bad at dealing with the cold. They are tropical plants. It just so happens that they are, uh, uh, you know... A Christmas plant. So whenever you get them from the store, they'll usually wrap them up in like a, a paper bag or something like that. Because if you leave them in a cold car for more than five, ten minutes, they can actually die, uh, or at least get damaged, get stunted, or something like that. So you really have to watch the watch the temperature on these guys. Uh, they're they're very difficult to grow. In fact, uh, you know, we had some trouble growing them. And another weird thing about them is you have to get them the exact amount of light that they need. So you have to get you have to like uh, uh, you know I don't remember the exact amount that they needed to have, but. You need to make sure that, you know, there's no street lights on them or anything like that. It'll literally ruin the plants. And you need to keep the lights on for a certain amount of time past when uh, the sun goes down, basically. So it's really, really hard to grow poinsettias, uh, you know, good and everything like that. And they're very, very bad at dealing with the cold. So if we had poinsettias sitting out here in the, in the cold out here, they'd be dead within 20 minutes, man. Or at least if you, they wouldn't even look dead after 15, 20 minutes. It might start to droop or something like that, but even if you brought it inside after that, they would still die anyways. Like, that's just how they are. Uh, they're very touchy little little guys. So, ooh, look at this, man. We're gonna go whoop, 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 whoop. Actually, I probably shouldn't have done that. I just kind of was excited to just actually sacrifice full fourth gear. And there she is. What she's... Oh, level 18, dude. Ownage sauce. For round 80 here, man. Deliciousness. And we haven't even been using her abilities either. Especially combining them together, which makes you just that much more powerful. 
looks freaking cool. I love it. Uh, this is the uh, the ridiculous cannon skin that we're dealing with right now. I, I find it more interesting than anything else. If you really think about, like, how does Ninja Kiwi make a mistake like that? Like, uh, it was the ca Zero One cannon just, like, in the wrong spot on the sprite sheet, which is how they do all the different sprites here, if you guys didn't know. You have to basically make it so um, the... Uh, hard to explain, but there's just one giant sheet of almost everything in the game. What everything looks like. Like these bricks right here, and all this junk. All of the... No, not the... Um, not this, but all the towers have a single sprite sheet. All the projectiles have a single sprite sheet. Uh, darts and everything. And they'll just repeat that. So, like, these darts, they don't do eight of them. They'll do one of it and tell the game what to do with all eight different of those things. And how they kind of travel throughout the world and everything is in a different spot. It was really crazy how you can make these sort of smaller... Uh, these kind of gigantic games into smaller file sizes, basically. Oh, crap. Oh, almost died. Camo blooms. Oh, scary. One of the main things was uh, she does not have cam detection. That's that's her, her thing. So I'm just going to get the radar scan here, even though it's not really necessary. But you get it anyways. Now, for sure, camos will not kill us. Even if we go kind of late game over here, dude, I'm just almost level 20. Once you reach level 20, delicious instead of can. Straight up. Uh, maybe not out of a can. Maybe even out of, like, a plastic bag or something like that, guys. Just straight up deliciousness. Everywhere. Everywhere. But I find the sprites to be super duper interesting overall. Um, uh, it's one thing that, like, as a game designer, I would not even, um, I would not even imagine having to make a sprite sheet like that. And when I say that they're, like, close together... They're freaking so tight, and that's how you can kind of change the game if you really, really want to. If you mess with the sprite sheet, you can literally mess with every single tower in existence and what they look like pretty easily in, like, Photoshop. It's not even that hard to do, really. So that's kind of how that they edit uh, BT5 and all these other things, you know? So we go, we finish it off, we complete this track. Absolutely delicious. On hard here. No problemo. $220 in our pocket. And we good, son. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you press that like button for, for me. Make sure you subscribe. I got a lot of new content coming up for you guys. A lot of new secret content as well. So thanks so much for watching. Have a super duper delicious day.